Hey VC, this is Mark with Vinyl Crush and uh, I'm going to be showing records uh, today from the record store day and on top of that uh, this is drop number two and on top of that I also got a VCLT from Mazzy of Norman Maslov and so I'm going to open that up first um, I'm going to show this to you you can see there's a little picture of Mazzy taking a picture on that he's uh, he's also does photography and represents photographers he's quite a talented guy um, and I love Mazzy he's a great guy so but before we get, before we do this I'm gonna I'm gonna call this the record store day cocktail party and so cheers to a little bourbon ah, because we have some party records here today as well so uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the vinyl community the VCLT that's the vinyl community love train many of us will uh, decide to share music with our buddies in the vinyl community and we'll send each other records um, tapes CDs uh, paraphernalia that we're interested in uh, just to share love so Mazzy thanks for the love uh, I'm going to take a minute I haven't opened this yet so hopefully I'll get this open without cutting my finger off but at least if I did that it'll be on film which would be kind of exciting I wonder if that's ever happened oh, I don't want to cut through Mazzy but I got to so there's something written on here that says oh at least you got to come over here this is to you too So Mark and Elise, for a special cocktail, put on the lava lamp and enjoy the Tiki Lounge Surf Exotica music. XO, right. XO hugs and kisses, Mazzy. Mazzy, this is to you. This is to Mazzy. <laughs> cocktail party in your name. I'm going to show uh, the, uh, the note that he wrote. Hopefully you can read that. Um, and so let's dive in and see what we got here first of all there's you're going to love this at least because there's some pins in oh, here oh yeah i know there's mazzy, mazzy pins, mazzy pins. <laughs> god mazzy you are a sweetheart this is absolutely wonderful hey, and sweet. supersonic okay wow cool cover i don't know if i know this album i've seen this um i have not heard it this is new to me. So, um, Ape Supersonic. I'm not even sure. Let me look here and see if I can get a sense. No, there's nothing on here. So I'm going to have to check this out. I don't know what this It's on. Um, we'll give you a follow-up. Bird Records. Sweet. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to show the cover. Um, I think I've seen somebody else show this before. Maybe it was Mazzy, actually. Um, that wouldn't surprise me at all. This Let's should we open it up real quick yeah, and see what's it. in it. Oh, I'm gonna use the. We've got some good records to show you all tonight. Oh wow! Look at this. This is beautiful. I'm glad I opened it. This oh, is great. Okay. <laughs> I think this is great. I can't wait to show this. Actually, I'll just show this first. Look at this. And, and notice the axe on the uh, on the little tiki wooden thing there. This is great. This is really wonderful. I'm hoping that this shows up okay um, without too much glare. Uh, so. Thank you, Mazzy. You're so sweet. Ooh, oh, nice, pretty blue vinyl. Beautiful blue vinyl and a, another shot of that axe and the beautiful girl <laughs> and the ape. <laughs> so we're going to check this out. Maybe I'll throw it on um, right at the end of the... Um, yeah, that's cool. And we'll have a drink while listening to the beginning of this. Sweet. Great. Thank you, Mazzy. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Mazzy, it's Norman Maslov, uh, and he has divine collection of records and he does great videos and he does a lot of them so please check him out i'll put his link below and mazzy thank you so much i can't wait to hear this how Thanks. sweet all right on with the record store day finds okay 
So Record Store Day 2020, um, a lot of people had trouble finding records. Um, I actually had to go to four record stores to get everything that I was looking for. And I was very lucky. I got, I think, pretty much everything. There are some things that I thought, oh, if they had that, I would get it. But but I really got everything. And as long as, as, long as we're talking about tiki uh, lounge music and cocktail parties, um, the first one that I want to show is uh, Dave Pike, Jazz for the Jet Set. Um, this originally came out in 1966. There are uh, a thousand copies of this that was printed for Record Store Day. It came out originally on Atlantic uh, labels, and I love that they used um, the, the same uh, Atlantic-looking labels, the same colors. I love these colors uh, on these old labels, so I love that they did that. Hopefully you can see uh, the girl with those really amazing shoes. Uh, so I've listened to this. Um, it's uh, pro partially produced by Herbie Hancock. He had a hand in this, and so he uh, plays organ on this. Um, I know Clark Terry plays uh, trumpet on this. Um, there's some other really good musicians. Um, it's, it's pretty much... Uh, pop jazz. Um, um, it's it's lounge music. It's it's. I think Dave Pike was moving away from straight ahead jazz when he made this record, and um, uh, and so it's kind of fun to hear somebody like Herbie Hancock playing uh, uh, really fun solos over simple changes like two two chord songs or three chord songs that are really simple and easy. Uh, and these guys are just jamming and having a great time, but it's really fun lounge music. And I was really happy to grab this with only a thousand copies out there. So, uh, and, and I think this is really kind of like Latin soul, um, pop jazz, that kind of stuff. It's, it's really good though, I highly recommend it. Um, and as long as we're still partying, um, Canned Heat Record Store Day Party. Uh, this is a series of um, rare and unreleased uh, songs by Canned Heat, so this is not a, a, a reissue. And um, I was, I mean, just outrageously surprised. I really didn't expect that this was going to be very good. Um, they have so many records out. They've done so much stuff. That I figured the unreleased stuff would be just meh, but it actually was was quite good. I'll show you the, the record. Um, I, I'm really, really pleased with this record. It's a lot of fun. Can't Heat, their late 60s um, uh, blues band, a lot of fun. So really pleasantly surprised by this. It's also on beautiful, I'll show you the blue vinyl um, and a little closer look at the, the label. Beautiful record. And I'll show you also the back of the cover. So again, I was. This is a pleasant surprise. It was one I, I picked up, thinking, well, you know, hopefully it'll be fun. I like Canned Heat a lot, and I was really pleasantly surprised. A lot of fun. So, and as long as we're still partying, um, for this one, I'm going to need another drink. I'm a, I'm a fan of the New York Dolls, and this is them live in uh, '73, I think, and and. Mm -hmm. Uh, the New York Dolls are a glam punk band. They're known for coming out on stage in platform boots and body stockings and lipstick. And they were just absolutely outrageous. Um, great music. Uh, David Johansson was a singer and great performer for this band. He went on to do some other things after. And um, so uh, this is recorded in between their first and second albums, which were great albums. So they were playing the some of from both albums on this and um and the recording is quite good it's really interesting um this is it just came out in this plastic it didn't have an album cover and in fact the album doesn't even have a label on it which i think is fascinating it's pretty spare pretty sparse but it's kind of like the new york dolls um you, you see what you get get what you see um, so that was a really, really fun album um, a lot of hard rock and music on that and i'm still partying heading in a little different direction uh, with Screamin' Jay Hawkins. So um, this was put out on Third Man Records. It's called Because Is In Your Mind. And I'm not even sure what that means. Uh, but this is his fourth album. Uh, it came out in 1970. Screamin' Jay Hawkins was known for just like screaming and yelling and sounding like a, a 
somebody was playing the trombone who didn't know how to play it or something. He just was just like loud and big and and just vibrant. He um, he liked dressing and playing with things that were kind of of the macabre. He liked shocking people. He was kind of like Alice Cooper before Alice Cooper. Um, and about the time he did this record, he decided he wanted to be taken a little more seriously as a musician, which is interesting because before he was doing this kind of music, he actually trained to be an opera singer. And apparently he was quite good, but he decided to, to head in a different direction with the music. But he wanted to be taken more seriously. So this record is a little more, a little less uh, shock rock and a little more R&B, kind of like um, a little bit edgier uh, uh, James Brown kind of thing. I don't know. It's it, And I like this. I mean, I like Screaming Jay Hawkins, but the more accessible version of him is actually quite good. Um, this came out on um, light blue vinyl. Um, uh, the, the cover, I'm not going to remember the name of the guy who did the cover. It was... Um, the Harry Who, question mark. These guys were in Chicago um, in the 60s. They kind of changed the art scene in Chicago. And I forget the name of the guy, but he was in that group. And he made this album cover. Um, and this was put out by Third Man Records. It's great quality. It's a reissue from the 1970s version. But I don't know if it was a remaster or not. This is uh, There's only a thousand of these that were printed, so I was really happy to get one. So um, next, so this was one I really wasn't sure I was going to get, Allman Brothers Band. This is the 13171. This is Allman Brothers Live Fillmore West. This concert was actually um, before the Fillmore East concert by several weeks, I think. And, um, and I, I was really hoping uh, the Fillmore East was amazing, but because they're mastering this now and getting this together now, I was really hoping that this was going to be um, better recording, a better album um, than the Fillmore East, which was an incredible album, so it would be hard to beat. Um, honestly, I'm not as impressed. I think I liked Fillmore East better. Um, this is good. Uh, it's, it's great to have um, the, the cover, um, and I'll show you. It comes with a poster inside, which is what the label on the record looks like, and I imagine this is maybe what the poster looked like that they... Um, put out for the show, uh, which is, it's nice, it's beautiful. The artwork on all of this is amazing. The the vinyl is in good shape. The, the um, I'll show you the inside. There's a whole explanation of what was going on for them at this time on here. So um, it, it's really well put together package. It's really beautiful. And, um, and musically, I just, I just, I think I like Fillmore East better. So um, this is, I'm trying to remember, actually, let me look here. This was a limited edition numbered. No, this wasn't numbered. That's right. Actually, the poster was numbered. I don't know what that's about. So I have a numbered poster, 3,903 out of 6,000. Um, and that there were 12,000 um, of these pressed, apparently. So I will leave it at that. Um, again, just not as impressed. Um, so I'm going to move on. Uh, I'm I'm going to stay now in the in the 70s. This is the Doors Soft Parade. I noticed a lot of people picked this up and talked about it. Um, this is a stripped down version. It's Doors only, so they got rid of the horns and the strings, and uh, and it's not the whole album. It's just like four songs, and um, uh, the first side of the album um, was. Uh, just the doors, just like it was without the strings and the horns. Um, this is probably hard to see. Um, it's also on clear vinyl. Again, it's, it's not just stripped down musically, it's also stripped down uh, in terms of this, just this plastic piece of paper here. So um, the, the side two has a lot of the same songs, but um, Robbie Krieger, the guitar player, overdubbed some new guitar parts on it. Um, which are nice. I mean, I enjoy this a lot. I, I like the stripped down versions of the songs. It's really an EP. I think it's really a 12 inch EP because there's only like f less than 15 minutes on each side of music. And, um, but I did get out of 12,000 released, I got number 158 out of 12,000. So that's a really early pressing. And that was kind of a surprise to get that. Um, 
So this is great. It's really good. It's great to hear the stripped down versions of these songs. Honestly, Touch Me, I love the horns on Touch Me, so I kind of miss that. But um, but it's still a great song, uh, gr a great album, um, a good mastering. Really enjoyed it. And again, still in the 70s, I picked up Paul McCartney's first album, uh, Half Speed Remaster. And... Um, so this album came out in, in, I think, 70, and he recorded it beginning in 69 when John Lennon had asked the band for a divorce. So uh, McCartney went home, and he was apparently incredibly depressed. He had a four-track, and he started making uh, uh, music. And so he basically produced this album by himself. He played all the instruments, did almost all the vocals. I think Linda sang back up on one or two songs. And uh, so this is all Paul McCartney. And it's very stripped down. It's very lo-fi. This is, I guess, the first lo-fi indie uh, pop album that probably was ever produced. Uh, I, I actually really like the songs on here. That would be something as an incredibly simple but beautiful, wonderful song, really well produced. The half-speed mastering sounds great. Um, Maybe I'm Amazed, a great song. Uh, when this album came out, it was kind of panned because it wasn't a you know, well overproduced um, bunch of pop songs like the Beatles would normally have done. It's, it's very different than that, but I really like it. So it was great to have the half-speed mastering done for this and really enjoying it. Uh, another album that I wasn't sure I was going to get, but if I found it, there's only a, a thousand of these pressed. Uh, this is a uh, French psych from the 60s and 70s. Um, I don't know any of the bands on here, but I love being surprised by new music I haven't heard before, and I got a lot of that here. Uh, there's one song on here I recognize, even though it's in French. It's a Burt Bacharach song. I think it's I'll Never Fall in Love Again or something like that. But um, but it, it's a delightful album. It was produced in France, um, one of a thousand. I'll show you the, the label. Um, and again, I'll show you the, the cover. And... So I was just happy to get this, and I'm, I'm, surprised, I'm pleasantly surprised it's been a fun album to listen to. The, the next couple of albums are the ones that were the, the choice for me. I was really looking to get these albums. So the first one um, is uh, Don Cherry, uh, Cherry Jam. Uh, this is uh, an EP. Uh, it's a 12-inch, 45 RPM. Uh, this was recorded in Copenhagen. Um, I'm trying to remember. Oh, I'm not sure when. The, I think it was like 65 or something like that. But um, so so he went to Copenhagen. At the time, Copenhagen was kind of the, the um, jazz center of Northern Europe. Uh, it was really a hop in place in terms of jazz. There were some amazing musicians there. So he recorded this at the uh, Danish National Radio. Uh, at the session place there with a bunch of musicians from there. So if you want to hear some really good avant-garde, uh, free jazz, uh, hard bop jazz music uh, that Don Cherry was doing at that time, with playing with some musicians that are exquisitely good, but not ones you'll be familiar with. So you're, you're going to hear something different than you usually hear. So I, I think this is a great album. I was really happy to get it. This is... Uh, one of a thousand, or so, one of two thousand, and I think this is number five hundred and forty-eight. I think I have that there on the corner. Um, so, out of two thousand, uh, and I was really happy. This is one of the, on my list of I really want to make sure I get this album, and I was really happy to get it. Um, the the other one that I really wanted to get and was happy to get was the Bill Evans "Some Other Time." So this was um, this is called the. Uh, Lost Sessions from the Black Forest. This was recorded in Germany. Uh, this was originally re, re, uh, mastered, not remastered, but mastered by Kevin Gray in 2016. It was released, I think, on, I think it might have been 45 RPM the first time. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't have that. It's expensive, hard to find. But they reissued it, um, another 6,000 copies. I think I have 5,000 or 4,000 or something. Uh, so not an early pressing, but um, but it sounds beautiful. Uh, he's playing with uh, Eddie Gomez on bass and uh, Jack Dijonet, Jack Dijonet on drums. Uh, I love Bill Evans. He's really in fine form. This is apparently before, or they were getting ready to go on tour. 
or, or had just started their tour. So they were really getting to know each other. It was very fresh, very vibrant. Um, it's a great album. I was really happy uh, to pick this up. Um, they recorded this in 1968, so in Germany. And, and it's, it's really well done. It's a double album. I'm just incredibly, uh, I love this. I adore Bill Evans. I think he's a great piano player. This also came with a booklet I'll show a little bit of. See uh, Bill playing piano, and then it's got a bunch of interviews and um, and uh, articles about them on tour. I'm not going to show it all, but this is also in there. Um, and I was so happy, even though they're printing out enough of these, I just really was afraid I wasn't going to get one. I was hearing stories of people not getting what they were looking for. So uh, that's the end of my record store day from drop number two. However, um, I went to four stores and the last one I went to, um, I, I took a quick peek in the new arrivals bin of the used records at that store. And uh, one of the owner, the owner was walking by and we chatted for a minute and I picked this up. I'm thinking, now what is this? And he looked at me and said, by the way, this is a great album. I would buy that if I were you. And the reason I'm going to show it is because this is from Record Store Day 2013. And somebody sold it, and, and so they had it in their bin there. This is, uh, so Stephen Malkmus, he has a band called The Jicks, Stephen Malkmus and The Jicks. And they're really an, an interesting band. I'm not going to talk a lot about this because it's not from the Record Store Day drop originally. But... Um, but if you know Can's uh, album, I'm not even sure that I know how to pronounce this, Ege Bamyasi. And uh, they, they basically played this live, he and some friends, and, and I didn't know what to expect. And honestly, I love this album. I'd put it on and I'd listen to it twice. Uh, it's a great album. So if you ever get a chance to pick this up, I highly recommend it. It's on green vinyl, um, which is beautiful. I mean, I love nice looking vinyl. I prefer black, but... It, uh, it's a beautiful album that sounds really good. So having said all that, um, I think we're going to put on uh, the beginning of the new record we got from Mazzy and close, close with some music from uh, that new album. So at least you want to come over here and there we go. Come on over. Thank you again, Mazzy. Thanks again, Mazzy. Thank you all. Um, looking forward to the next Record Store Day drop. Mm. <laughs> Thank you all for uh, joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time. And remember, folks, listen to Rose Lit Bones. <laughs> 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 they are a good party band as well. We love Rose Lip Bum. All right. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.